When I was nine years old, I had guts. I had big dreams in 1987. I was hooked on Star Search, and you can't do that on television. I wanted to be discovered, to be seen. I was one of three Filipinos at my otherwise all-white school in Redlands, California. One was my sister, and the other was a girl who claimed to be related to Ferdinand Marcos. Yeah, the former dictator of the Philippines. But I wasn't concerned with my home country or culture. I wanted hair like Kelly McGillis. I wanted to eat a sizzler. I wanted to play croquet. But most of all, I wanted to be a star and Smiley Elementary's talent show would be my chance to shine. <laughs> but it wasn't easy recruiting dance partners to perform the Bengals' number one hit, Walk Like an Egyptian. <laughs> Even my best friend said no. Thankfully, Karina Cameron was game. Her mom was one of the nurses who took care of baby Faye. She was the first infant to receive a baboon heart transplant, but died 21 days later. My mom was only a nurse's assistant. She never had stories that cool. After only two rehearsals, things got a little hairy between our moms. Jenny, my mom began one afternoon, I don't want you to hang around Karina anymore. You know what her mom did? She refused to pay the costume I bought for Karina. When I return it, there's boogers all over it. I know her mom did that. I had to pay for the damages. I was confused. I didn't believe it. Did mom even get permission from Karina's mom to buy her outfits? Maybe mom went over budget. Maybe mom was being unreasonable. Whatever it was, it was her fault. I mean, what kind of mother would wipe snot all over a costume? And then what did that accusation say about my own mother? <laughs> but I knew better than to question her. We were raised to respect our parents and elders no matter what. Talking back, that was something spoiled white kids did. <laughs> So I accepted the story and laid low until the talent show, just thankful I had anything to wear. So on Thursday, May 28th at 7 p.m., I waited nervously for showtime. Dance routines for Lean On Me, Material Girl, and What Have You Done For Me Lately, <laughs> and even a horrible recreation of a Pace Picante sauce commercial. <laughs> As I walked to the back of the stage to queue up with Karina, some boys were laughing and pointing at me. Hey, we can see your underwear. Shut up, I said. It's not my underwear. And it wasn't. It was a leotard, you know, the kind gymnast wore. Something that I had on underneath my sheer costume instead of showing my underwear. Yeah, whatever. Those are your panties. I tried to shake it off. I looked over at Karina and smiled. After the costume debacle, her mom had bought her an outfit. She wore a mustard yellow tank dress and a Cleopatra-style wig, but instead of hair, it had silver streamers, like the ones you would see on the handlebars of girly bikes. And me? I looked nothing like an Egyptian. Instead of an awesome headdress, I had a sparkly headband. Instead of a snake arm bracelet, I had silver elastic armbands. And instead of sandals, white socks and ballet slippers. I also wore silver hoop earrings, like tons of white acrylic necklaces, and a black sequined belt. My dark hair was pulled back into a high ponytail, bangs were curled, Mom tried to give me Egyptian eyes with makeup, but I just looked more Asian. <laughs> I was dressed like a G-rated version of Barbara Eden and I Dream of Jeannie. <laughs> Karina looked more like an Egyptian in her improvised costume. 
I was a walking mistranslation conceived by my mom, whose pop culture knowledge missed the mark by an entire continent. <laughs> so the boys walked away, continuing to point and laugh. What was I thinking? I was going to be on stage in this stupid costume. Everyone would think I was in my underwear and laugh at me. I was supposed to captivate the audience and reel in adoring fans. Yeah, so Ed McMahon wasn't in the audience, but even if he had been, I clearly didn't have the star quality to pull in a perfect scorecard. I didn't want to do it anymore. I just felt such shame. But then I saw my mom standing smack in the middle of, for all of Smiley Elementary to see, shouldering a heavy video camera that she borrowed from a friend. I wanted her to sit down, to fold into the margins of that auditorium. But she was excited. For once, she wasn't working a late shift at the hospital. I couldn't let her down. Suddenly, I felt as though someone else were moving my body for me. And exactly at 7.37 p.m., we were on stage, standing still. Backs to the audience, legs hip distance apart, arms above our head, we heard our cue, the tambourines, arms slowly descended, fanning out in a semicircle, outlining our brilliant auras, jazz hands shaking their way down to their sides, a gong sounded. We flipped around, Karina was on time. I was late. <laughs> we were already off count. Our side-to-side -side choreography looked frantic. Kids in the front row were pointing at me. I kept screaming inside, it's not my underwear! <laughs> I was flustered. At least my choreographic vision, though, was on point. Whatever lyrics I understood, I mined. If they move too quick, away of the falling line like a domino. <laughs> we managed to imitate the gestures of that iconic chorus, but we moved in that uncomfortable, slap-together kind of rhythm that only prepubescents know. <laughs> we kept switching places. Stage left, stage right, back to stage left, back to stage right. I loved the song so much, but I wasn't into it. It just became like a shame anthem. By the time I reached the third chorus of way oh way oh it had officially become the longest minute and a half of my already small existence. We were back in sync, but our moves were predictable. I did a, gar a cartwheel for the guitar solo, but it was no Nadia Comaneci. <laughs> Karina watched me the whole time. In all the dance pairs before us, there was always one girl who followed and one girl who led. One who was unsure and one who was... I can do this in my sleep, sure. One girl had to shine a little brighter and I decided it had to be me. I didn't care about those dickweeds anymore. The song was awesome, and my presence was a, like a lighthouse to Karina. She needed me. I had verb again. I moved like an upright pink snake. She followed. We were back on track. <laughs> Told you. During my Susanna Hoff, uh, Susanna Hoff solo, I saw them again. The boys who made fun of me. They were in the back of the auditorium, up against the wall, copying my Egyptian moves. And from where I stood, I couldn't tell if I was being mocked or if for one glorious moment, I was being worshipped. <laughs> I knew better. They weren't apologizing by regaling in my awesome choreography. So I rolled my eyes as hard as I could and shook my head. I flubbed my lip syncing. I could feel my eyes water. I just wanted it to be over. 
When the song ended, we were next to each other, much closer than we were at the beginning. The music faded out, the clap sparse. I was mad at everyone. For the boy, at the boys for making fun of me, my mom for thinking my costume was anything like an Egyptian, and mostly at myself for wanting to belong somewhere. The popular girls had the cute matching outfits and professionally choreographed routines. Their blonde hair and freckled skin seemed to glow on stage. They rocked that Kelly McGillis body wave hair I wanted so badly, but instead I was desperately growing out a home perm. <laughs> Even their dimples looked better than mine when they smiled. No one made fun of them. Their parents and friends yelled out their names. Our classes whooped and hollered. Those girls were star search material, not me. I was a dark Asian kid whose parents were separated. I had to learn how to use a stove, how to answer the phone so that kidnappers didn't know we were home alone. <laughs> I had to figure out how to be the eldest child of a, single class, of a single working class mother. But it also had to be the cultural translator to make sure that our tiny family wasn't eaten up, that we weren't seen as outsiders. I had to trailblaze. I had to figure this shit out. 27 years later, the documentary of my childhood humiliation is still in surprisingly good shape. <laughs> Watching the tape was originally a rite of passage into my inner circle of friends. But when I watch it now, I think, what happened to that me? To that bravery? To going after childhood dreams no matter how far-fetched? Even though I was clearly upset with being made fun of and thus thrown off my game, I did it. And up until that point, I was fearless. In the very last clip of the video, all the lights in the auditorium are on. Everyone is packing up. Karina is gone. I catch mom filming me. My face becomes a smiling obligation, both hands opening and closing rapidly while I say bye bye I try to get away from the camera. She asks, say what do you say? I shake my hands into a megaphone so that she doesn't miss a word. I said, bye bye the end, ciao, sayonara. I turn away, yet she doesn't relent. Mom, mom. I keep making faces and waving my hands like awkward birds. I pout hard. My sister is flaring her nostrils in the background. I want to see you, she says. So I cheese really big, shutting my eyes and tilting my head to the left. Oh, don't do that, she says. I smile briefly, only to follow up with eyes fluttering up into their sockets. Then I really whine. I feel bad watching this scene on repeat. I feel bad for my mom and for myself. I didn't understand then the sacrifices we made, the discomfort we both must have felt. I wish I could change that moment. Stop now, I cry, my hands covering my face. The tape stops abruptly, but there's no smooth fade out, no special effects and no clean edit. Thank you.